Your new book that just came out is Now That's Funny. And I understand that it's 24 writers and you give them a premise, like a, a situation about a mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. And instead of asking them about their process, because I understand you say that's the fastest way to get fiction from an artist is to uh, ask them what their creative process is. Well, you know, our, when you interview somebody and you ask them about their process, you have no idea what you're getting. And a lot of people sort of romanticize the way they wish their process was. Some will tell you what they think they do. But the easiest way to get at it, the most direct way, is to say, do it and we'll watch. And these people were so nice about letting us do that. And uh, one of the things that we thought was really interesting is the people we had had major credits. I mean, these were people who were showrunners. A lot of these were show creators. And all of them, at one point or another, said, we're kind of nervous doing this because we have one shot at this, and then we're going to be compared <clears throat> to our really, really famous peers who might do a better job, and we want to, you know. How so, much time did you give them to work out this premise? As much time as they yeah. needed. The, the average interview was anywhere from about an hour to two hours or so, and that was it. They had so their shot. What you're reading in the book is a liberally ed edited so uh, we were very sure the most important thing to us was the the premise making because you get 24 different stories from this one premise and but great questions come out of it too but the most important thing that we were sure not to cut was the was the the premise work and i i think it it it, it comes across and then the little stories that we tell the little uh what, what do you call them i always forget what you call them well i mean we tried to sidebars put, we we tried to put some of our own insights into it when we saw something and every once in a while we'd see something really unusual we'd see trends like um a surprisingly large number of the writers had graduate degrees in math and science and i said like, hmm that's weird for comedy writers and one of the things that we found interesting is particularly for TV comedy writers, people in a room, they tend to be more story guys or joke guys. And the science math guys were almost exclusively story guys. They were well organized and they were really good at plotting. A lot of the people we, we interviewed also had stand-up backgrounds. And they tended to be much more, surprisingly, the joke guys. In fact, there was one funny story that Lou Schneider, who, uh, who wrote for Everybody Loves Raymond, told us a story that he was, they were sitting around the table, and one of the guys grabs him and pulls him under the table, and he says, pitch this joke for me. He says, pitch it yourself. He says, no, no, you've done stand-up. I want to make sure this gets in. You'll tell it better than me. So people knowing their skill set, and, and yeah. what if we were to give you a premise, our own premise? I'm curious how the two of you would work it out. It would be brilliant, I'm, I'm pretty certain. It would be... It would take a couple hours. It would. Okay. Um, Peter, I'm. You know, he. Feel free to correct me, but my observation uh, is that I've talked about this a lot with my students because the, a good way to go out of a university, especially as an undergrad, is with a partner. They are much more likely to hire you as a partner when you're young and help you develop your craft than as a solo writer, I'm talking about comedy now, I don't know anything about how drama works, but I'm pretty sure that there's so much cross-pollination now, it's the same. But uh, the way Peter is, it's too, gr I got way away from the story. I, I don't know, what drug am I on today? I have no idea. Um, uh, um, I, um, I, I believe that it is really a bad thing for people to have the same skills when they're partners. So this, this goes toward answering the premise question you asked. Sure. If both people in the partnership have the same skills, I don't see a reason for the partnership. Complementary skills, Peter is, he has two things. One drives me crazy. He is able to put anything down as a draft. He has no blocks. Uh, how he can even call himself a writer without blocks is shameful <laughs> but he'll just put it down knowing it's awful it's not ever as awful as he thinks it is and then he'll say to me K 
can you work on this and develop it? So whereas I would rather have dental surgery than do a first draft, it's painful for me, but I love rewriting. And uh, Peter is, is capable of seeing structure in his head. I think this comes in part from his science background. Right. I'll start anywhere in the story and just let it write itself. And both of those ways of working on developing a premise or anything else are valid. You know, the one thing we've learned from this book is there isn't any one way to do it. And I don't know if I answered your question, but you, I liked yeah. my answer better than, <laughs> than your what question. I originally did. I mean, <laughs> I have a little blabbermouth going on today. Is but, that, did that sort of answer the question? It, we haven't gotten to it yet, the question. Well, but yeah. but I'll, I will throw in one I was other... I talking about partnership, I guess. One other sort of interesting thing that we'll get to. It'll be foreplay for the question. Oh, good. Okay. He which is... is trying there to was sell a, that book. There was a really... <laughs> there was a really huge study on creativity done at Berkeley years ago. And it wasn't just uh, creative artists. It was architects, uh, doctors, all sorts, all, all across fields. And... The two major findings that they came out with were creative people are, have a better ability to tolerate ambiguity and really important, they have the ability to suspend judgment. And one of the things you find, particularly with young writers, is they'll write something, then they immediately get depressed saying it's not great, it's not good enough. They're and right. One of the things that, <laughs> and one of the things that, that we've learned and that, that for sure helps me is I want to get something down. Um, we, again, like the, the old Hemingway quote, write drunk, edit sober. So once you get something down, then you have something to work on. And I've never written anything that looks at the end like it started out at the beginning. So I don't, I don't feel constrained about writing anything because I know it's going to get reshaped, retooled, reworked. Yeah, I don't have that.